You're right, everybody. How you all doing? And welcome to the second episode of the Udinese career mode. As you can see, the board have allocated us 500 grand for the sale of the Mizzy for, uh, to Milan. And we also got some money from the tournament game or cup game, which we played last episode. We then go in for a striker, Martin Braithwaite. We're going to offer him 8 million. It said he had like decent potential. Our global network scout said that. So I was like, we may as well sign him. He's 23 years old. I know he's pacey. We then get an offer for Gierho for 650 grand from Empoli, and I do accept that. And uh, they, Toulouse, I believe that's how you say the name, uh, they accept 8 million, and then we offer a contract to Braithwaite for 30 grand a week, and he does indeed accept it. So we do have our brand new young striker, and there's confirmation of the uh, sale to Empoli. And here is a Braithwaite, he's very, very pacey, he's got very, well, he's got decent finishing, decent dribbling, and he should be a good addition to the Udinese squad. Now, we do go into the first game of the Serie A this episode, starting off the season, well, not the season because we've already played the cup game, but starting off the uh, the league, here is how we started. We are against Empoli first game. Uh, we've gone with the 4-3-3 attacking formation. We've got Braithwaite starting up top. Got Weidman Silva along him. Obviously, Bakuna and Garvat are our other two signings, which we've made this transfer window, uh, playing both fullback positions. And here is our Empoli lined up. They, unfortunately or fortunately, uh, do not have the player we just sold them, but they are using a 4-3-1-2 setup. No wingers, so I was hoping we could exploit the wingers as we do have pretty pacey wingers. And in the 12th minute, Vida passed to Fernandez. Fernandez over the top to Braithwaite. Braithwaite using his pace to get past the defender. Brilliant control when he received the ball. And he just blasts it near post past the keeper. And in the under 15 minutes of his Udinese career, he gets his first goal. So I was, this was looking good. I was hoping he could score a lot more through this season. However, in the 23rd minute, to, uh, Empoli run down the wing. Bakuna tries to clear it, gets on the edge of the box to an Empoli player, and he switches it onto his other foot and places it in the bottom hand corner. Our goalkeeper, as you can see from the replay, he was never gonna get anywhere near that. It was a beautiful finish from the Empoli man. And it was a uh, one all, which was kind of disappointing. I did want to win this game. I wanted to win our first City R game. Now in the 34th minute, Empoli back on the attack. They cross it in and it was a brilliant save from the goalkeeper from the volley. However, the rebound falls straight back to the Empoli man. And he does indeed header it in the net, making it 2-1. And we are, for the first time in this game, losing. And that that wasn't very... That was great. It wasn't great. We did need to win this uh, first game. So, yeah, I wanted to have a good start in the league. And I want to try and get a good finish. So, Weidmer in the 64th minute. He gets tackled in the box and it falls to Braithwaite. Braithwaite just slots it into the left-hand corner. It was an odd finish, to be honest. He kind of took it with, with the foot, which I was not expecting to take it with. He took it with his right foot. I guess that's his strong one. But that is his second goal in Serie A and his second goal on his debut for Udinese. So his career was starting off very well. Now, in the 77th minute, Empoli, good play, but the shot goes straight into our goalkeeper's hands. And that is actually how the game ended, 2-all. I mean, it's not the best start, but it's a decent start. 2-all, we... We dropped two points, I feel like. Obviously, we were losing 2-1, but I feel like we should have won this game. We had a very decent team, but that was it. We had one point from the first game, and here we go into the deadline day. Very un uneventful for us. We didn't sign anyone on the last day. We made three signings, Bakuna, Garbutt, and uh, Braithwaite, and that's what you're seeing right now. All of the transfers which we have completed, some of the uh, transfers which the club completed for us before we even got here. But then we go into our second game, and this is the biggest game of our season so far. We are against Juventus, who are currently in real life in the Champions League final. They won the cup, uh, not the cup, the league. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a, a tough challenge. As you can see, they've signed Hugo Lloris in the uh, in the transfer window. We've got Chiellini, Tevez, Pogba, Vidal, Perlo. That midfield is stacked. They do have one of our men, Pereira who is on loan at Juventus, so, you know, I was just hoping that he didn't score against us, and here is how we lined up, we did an unchanged side, I felt like we played decent last game, and I wanted to keep the same players out there, see if they could perform against the biggest club in Italy at the moment, 
And then the sixth minute, Pogba gets the ball inside the box. Some lovely dribbling. He shoots. We've got a lot of men behind the ball. Uh, but we do give it away to Perlo on the edge of the box. Now, Pereira, the Udinese Loney. He, he's on the ball, pass it inside to Tevez, pass it back to Pogba, Pogba pass it to Pereira, and it goes out wide to Lorente, and Lorente really should have done better from there, he should have troubled the keeper, but it does hit the side netting. Now in the 28th minute, Tevez with a beautiful header, puts Juventus in front, and there was really nothing I could do about that. He beat the defender, I'm not really sure how, because our centre-half should be taller, should be able to win that header. But nevertheless, it was a beautiful header. Lorente crossing it in. in oh, it just goes off the underside of the bar. And them goals just look so amazing on this FIFA. They really do. In the 33rd minute, Lorente had a chance. But it would have been 2-0. But a good save from our goalkeeper kept it at 1-0. Now, we go up the other end with Weidma, who had a clear-cut chance. But unfortunately, the goalkeeper saved it. Now, in the 42nd minute, Arturo Vidal... He gave us a free kick, 31 yards out, and Bakuna, I bring him, bring him in to be a fullback to defend, but he's got brilliant free kicks, and would you look at that for a free kick, 31 yards out, and he does that. I was not expecting that from Leandro Bakuna, but he does level us, so Udinese won, Juventus won, and this could be a goal of the season contender, I know it's only our second uh, Second game in the league, but look at that. It goes off the inside of the post. He gets it up and over the wall. Inside of the post, Hugo Lloris has no chance getting there, and that's his first goal in Serie A. In the 45th minute, they do go ahead and score with Lorente to make it 2-1, but it did not count as the linesman holds his flag up and says it's offside. From the first, the first time looking at it, it doesn't actually look like it's offside. And to me, it still didn't look like it was offside, but luckily we get the decision, and at halftime we go in, drawing one all. Now in the 64th minute, they are on the attack. Pereira getting a bit lucky. They have a shot and a brilliant save from our goalkeeper, keeps it at one all. And in the 90th minute, dying moments of the game, Chiellini has an absolutely nightmare. An absolute nightmare, sorry, that, that was incorrect English. And... I don't know what he was doing, to be honest. He was sort of slowly walking around his box. I think he was trying to wait for the game to end. But Braithwaite, with his pace, pounces on the ball, tackles Giolini, just puts it puts it past Giolini and slots it past Lloris, making it 2-1 against Juventus. Sort of lucky with that win. But, you know, he, he uh, took the chance when he had it. So 2-1 to Udinese against Juventus. And this was the first big test for us. So... I was quite happy with that. Bakuna with a wonderful free kick and then Braithwaite with the not-so-wonderful goal, but it still went in and made it 2-1. Now, we do come in to the next game, Udinese against Napoli. Napoli, again, a very good team. We had an unchanged side because we won against Juventus 2-1, and that that's quite hard in this league. So winning against Juventus, I felt all the players deserved their spot and played the same team against Napoli, who are indeed another pretty good team in Italy uh, they've got a very good squad obviously they got Gonzalo Higuain the main man he's he's an absolute monster in this game they've got Mertens de Guzman Calajon they've got a very good uh, attack going forward their defense however was not the greatest looking from this but in the eighth minute Fernandez he gets it into Weidmer and what a goal that was a volley he scoops it in pretty much with the volley on his left foot, I'm not sure if that's his weak foot or if that's his strong foot. I'll have to check that after the game. But what a strike that was on the volley and puts it past the keeper. I knew their defence was uh, was fragile, but I don't think most defences could have handled that. So that puts us 1-0 up in under 10 minutes. Now in 36 minute, Braithwaite goes in the box. He has a shot deflected. Unfortunately, he didn't get it in. However, shortly after 38th minute... We pass it into Braithwaite, and I really don't know what this goal was all about. He did sort of a 180 turn, 180 degrees turn when he received the ball. It was a very weird finish, as you can see here. And then he just somehow generated so much power behind the ball. Did make it 2-0, so I wasn't I wasn't complaining, but it was a weird, weird goal. And that was his fourth goal in Serie A. After the uh, half, 65th minute, Napoli had a good chance. Passing it to Mertens, and they get the header off, but the goalkeeper 
our goalkeeper made a pretty decent save. Now in the 79th minute, we do go on the attack. Braithwaite using his pace, he cuts inside. All he has to do is shoot it, get it in. The goalkeeper saves it, and then I have no idea what our other player was doing there. He kind of slided, missed the ball, and unfortunately, we did not get a third goal. However, in the 84th minute, Napoli thought they had scored. It was a pretty decent cross. He kind of chipped it over the keeper or kind of bounced on the ground and went over the keeper however the linesman does put up his flag and as you can see the player who scored is is well offside to be honest and uh, that does make it 2-0 to Udinese against Napoli and that was a very good result so out of three games we played in this episode we got two wins against Juventus and Napoli and we also got a draw and here is how the table looked so far we're on seven points in third place Torino top on nine points with three wins. Sampdoria, Napoli and Genoa are all in the relegation spots, but it's only three games in the season. And here is the squad if you want to look through it. I'll be showing that at every single end of the episode. But that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy it. And also, if you've got any constructive criticism, make sure you leave that in the comments below how I can make my videos better. But apart from that, that's it. Thank you for watching and have a brilliant day.